I hope everyone is well today. Um, my name is Adriano. I'm from Brazil and I'm living in Australia. It's been six years already and um, it's a pleasure to be with you today guys and share a bit of my experience and what's been happening to me from the career perspective in Australia and share a few insights in a way that you can take something for your own life not only from the career perspective but also for your life. Um, I've made a quick presentation to make it easier our communication and along the presentation if you have, if you have any questions feel free to ask you can just type in um, are you answer straight away? And that's it, let's get started. Um, let me give you a, just a very quick overview about the presentation today. We're gonna start with um, some acknowledgements and then go to the gratitude exercise. Then after the brief introduction about the speaker. And then after we jump into the emotional intelligence overview, and then also the emotional intelligence applied. So how I have applied these techniques in my own life and how it's been helping me here in Australia. To finish off, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you guys an example of designing thinking and how I've been using this methodology as well. And yeah, let's get started. So the acknowledgements, um, I wanna say thanks to the Lenway Education. Thanks Walter. Thanks, Thais, for opening up this space to connect to the community with the students. I feel very honored for them as I start my journey in Australia as an international student too. I also want to say thank you to my mentors, Gregorio Salas, Monica Sweeney, and then also to Lucas, is, um, with, which also has been helping me with the marketing uh, for my own business. And thanks everyone for being here today. So the gratitude exercise, like um, I love to start any talk, any webinar I do. I like to start in this way. So we can all be in this uh, receiving and, posit and positive state of mind, which is gonna help us to receive and absorb more the information and be at the same energy, the same vibration. So with your permission, guys, I would like you all to place your hand on your chest and take a minute to think about something that happened this week that you're grateful for. And then take a deep breath and repeat to yourself, I'm grateful for that. Once again, with your permission, I want you to keep your hand on your chest and think about something that happened this year that you're grateful for. Again, take a deep breath and repeat yourself, I'm grateful for that. Finish the exercise, and if your permission again, I want you to keep your hand up on your chest and think about something that happened this year. And again, take a deep breath and repeat yourself. I'm grateful for that. Anytime you want to remind these feelings that you're having right now by being in this gratitude state of mind, all you need to do is just place your hand on your chest and then this will remind you what you're feeling right now. So we, we, we are creating this beautiful anchoring through 
use your hands, place your hands on our chests, and then remember what's the feeling of being grateful for is. So now I'm gonna jump into a very brief introduction about myself from the career perspective. Eh? So before I came to Australia, six years ago, um, I had a small business company, which was events management. And then I also was a planning supervisor in a technical service company. So being a small business, I was involved in um, basically all the process, né? HR, marketing, sales, finances, planning, everything. <laughs> That's the, the normal life as a small business owner. Here in Australia, I made like a kind of frame just to give you a perspective how my journey in Australia has started and then a little bit of what I'm doing right now. So I came to Australia in 2014. Um, I had no English, zero, literally zero English and only $600 in my pocket and two friends. That's how my journey in Australia has started six years ago. And it wasn't my intention to stay in this country. Back in, the, back in that time, I thought like with staying only one year in Australia would be enough time to learn the language, save some money, and then come back to Brazil and, be, it would be, and build another business. <laughs> Thing has changed as uh, I guess changed for most of the people when they came here and I decided to stay in the country. So the next, is, the, the next years has been mainly focus, focused on finding ways to stay in, in, a, in this country, using the existing ex professional experience and skills I had in Brazil. But unfortunately, it couldn't be used because my previous experience, it was on the list. And then also, I didn't finish. Um, I didn't finish my, ba my my bachelor in Brazil. I was I was about to, to one year to finish it, and then I, I decided to give up and put my whole energy to stay in Australia. So I literally, literally started this, this journey in Australia from scratch, from zero. 2000, uh, 2015, I was still a student in labor. And then I started doing a few courses about personal and professional development to help me to deal, to cope better with the situations I was living in Australia. I still didn't have the language. I didn't have any experience that could be used in this country. So it was, um, it was, very, it was very tough to do the kind of jobs I was doing. So I was um, doing this personal and professional development courses helped me to cope with the situations better. In the beginning of 2015, I found this company, which I'm still working for, which became my sponsorship and then my, my PR. And finally in 2016, two, two and a half years later, um, I got my sponsorship as a building associate. And, um, Slowly, things start to get a little better in Australia. In 2017, I was still in a sponsorship as a building associate, working in a construction company. I forgot to mention before, sorry. And then I start my, story, um, I start my coaching studies here. Initially, the focus wasn't to become a coach. It was mainly to again, to deal with the situations in a more resourceful way. One, because I didn't have any control over my career. The fact that I had a sponsorship somehow kind of locked me in a position that I couldn't change till I finished the sponsorship phase. So I had this feeling that I have no control over my career. So I started to focus in another aspects of my life. So that's why I start studying coaching. One, 
to understand more, more consciously about relationships. So I could like be able to relate with the people more here in Australia, to understand more about finances, to understand more about my uh, intimate relationships as well. So this coaching um, life has started for me as a need, as a personal need for me. 2018, I was, it was my second year in sponsorship and also the second year as a coaching student. And also the first year as a emotional intelligence coach. coach. And then also I did a part-time as a musician. I play percussion, do a little bit of DJing. It was, um, was more like something to keep life fun in a way. And then also connect with other creatives as music, writing, and all the creative craft has been always my passion. And then also I did a few sessions as a dating coach. coach. Just coming back in this EI coach, the emotional intelligence coach. I started doing this in my company. So the company I'm working for, um, like just like a long, short story. My relationship with the director, with, the, with this company, it was very, it was very tough in the beginning. So like to put in the right words, let's say the owner of the company, when we, when we met, he had some unconscious racist behaviors, right? Which makes it very difficult for him to see on me as a valuable asset for the company. One, because I didn't have the language, I didn't have the experience. And then also subconsciously for him, I was someone who couldn't bring any value for the company. And then also to get this sponsorship, there was a huge line of other people more experienced, with, uh, more, more experienced than me. And then also they were all native English speakers. So I have all the barriers possible before I actually get the sponsorship. Along with our relationship, which is being in parallel, I was working for this company as a building associate and doing this part-time emotional intelligence code. It always started mainly because I was able to understand his needs and wants in a more deeper level than the other people, which helped me to have a different approach in our relationship, which slowly makes him change his perspective about myself and our relationship as well. I will bring some examples when you go a bit more deeper in the emotional intelligence applied so you guys can understand more what happened from point E to point B which is what I'm doing at the moment so you guys can have a more clear idea of, of what happens along this journey. So in 2020, this year, I got my PR. It was in March, so it's been only five months. I'm already, I'm a permanent resident in Australia. So since I got my PR, I start building this uh, new desired reality. I want to have, I want to live, I want to have here in Australia. So I went to building associates in the company to project associate, which basically just give me a more responsibilities in the projects that we are running in this construction company. 
and it's just basically the right step, the, the next step of this uh, career in the construction company. So what I do, I'm responsible to deal with the contracts with the subcontractors today. And then also, um, I help the project managers and the builders and the architects, engineers to, to keep the budgets on track, money, resource, and time as well. I still doing this emotional intelligent coach right now, not only for him in the company, but also for other people inside the company. And then slowly I'm doing for the community as well. This year, I also became a country entrepreneur. Um, many people ask me what is that means? Or what is that quantum entrepreneur means? So through, uh, basically through the network I've been building in this last year in Australia, I met a group of coaches who are connected with other coaches and therapists in Germany, which has developed uh, a frequency device that helps to inject micro frequencies in your body. And basically it regulates the frequencies in your body by injecting these micro frequencies in a quantum level. So that's how, that's why we call ourselves as a quantum entrepreneur because we, we share, we sell a device that affects our well-being in a quantum level. If you guys want to, more, want to know more about this, we can, we can talk later. And, and I also became a writer. So like this whole time I was in Australia, I never, I never came to Brazil. It was uh, my first time I came to Brazil was um, December last year to January this year. So after six years away from Brazil, I finally came back. So I wanted to come back with something that I could live there. So I, I wrote this book, it's a poetry book. It's called Levando a Vida, Elevando a Alma, which basically is, basically means living life and clearing the soul. Where uh, creatively, I just wrote some poems for your body, for your mind and for your soul. And then also I become a creative entrepreneur here in Australia. So what I'm doing is um, I'm combining this creative skills, this passion for music, this passion for writing, this passion for coaching, this passion for helping people to expand their perception about themselves in one place where I can help a specific niche to become more creative. And then also have a better understanding about themselves as well. So this, this is what I'm doing right now. And this is a very quick and long short story about this, what's been happening this last six years in Australia. If I have to summarize this first year, six years in Australia, I would easily, without even thinking about say that resilience and empathy was the, was the most present things in my, in my whole Australian life in these first six years. Resilience, I would say, because it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy coming from, um, coming to this country with zero English, have no financial resource to support me, have no networking, have literally like, have literally starting life from scratch. It required me lots of resilience, which emotional intelligence has been so important from this perspective. And then also empathy, empathy to, to understand my own feelings, to understand better myself, but also to, to understand the ability to understand others as well and create a deeper connect with people who could help me to, to be this, stay in this country. 
for the next six years, I like to keep my focus in in a couple words. So it um, helps me to keep going the right directions. So what I'm expecting for myself for the next six years is these few words definitely summarize it. Innovation and creativity. I really want to find a way to combine everything I've been through, everyone I have met along this path, and really create something that can make the world, the world a better place to live. It's a very cliche word, but um, I can tell from personal experience that really having this mindset of how can, how can I make a world a better place is literally has been helping me a lot to keep thriving. If you guys have any question, please don't hesitate. And I hope I'm not going too fast. Um, is everything okay so far? Can you just, you guys just give me a sign in the chat? Oh, it's okay. It's all good. Keep going. All right, thank you. So let's jump a little bit deeper in the emotional intelligence. So what is emotional intelligence? What is that that everyone has been, has been talking a lot lately? Eh? It's, a very, it's a very hot topic. Eh? because of this current situations that the world is living, it kind of, um, kind of put us back to look inside ourselves and have a better understanding of what's going on inside so then we can actually make a change outside. So for me, emotional intelligence is just uh, the ability to perceive emotions. emotions eh? As it says here, is a way of recognizing, understanding, and choosing how we think, feel, and act. And also shaping our understanding of our understanding of ourselves and our, and our interactions with others. So just, just the ability to, to really know what's going on inside. And by knowing that, make the right choice in our actions and behaviors. Yeah? So why does it matter? Why emotional intelligence is so important? Yeah? From personal experience, I would say emotional intelligence, it matters because it literally saved my life and saved other people's lives. But it's also important to bring some statistics as well. So you can see that it is, it is actually important in a more a broad perspective, yeah? So I got some studies from, from the courses I've been doing, yeah? And says that emotional intelligence was four times more powerful than IQ. It's just like four times more powerful. This is, this is very expressive numbers, yeah? Here you got some other numbers as well, as you guys can see. That in a worldwide study, companies were looking for hiring new employers. 67% of the most desired attributes were, were emotional intelligence, competence, empathy, social management, relationship management, self-recognition, social recognition. It's all we call the soft skills, yeah? So it's 67% to 32% compared to the other competence. Um, this gives a little ex uh, explanation of why does it matter, why emotional intelligence, especially, especially right now, especially in this situation, 
that we all live at the moment, why emotional intelligence is so important. And also it's important because it can literally affect all aspects of our lives, positively or negatively. Also, because 95 of our lives is controlled by the subconscious mind. By studying neuro-linguistic program, being a master on it, by studying hypnotherapy, it's, um, it makes very, very interesting to see this number, this 95%, and then observing myself and observing other people and see how much programs that we run in a, on a daily basis that you don't even perceive it. And this is what happens with most of us in our entire lives. 95% of our lives is run by programs, by things that we, do, we don't even know why do you do, but, but you just do it. So become more aware of this. What is this, this 95% of subconscious behaviors? It gives you, it gives us more control of our own lives, which is, I believe is the first step to make a change. Emotional one of the most used ways of our subconscious mind to communicate and take over the situations. Our subconscious mind is very connected with your body. You know, what emotion is? Emotion is the physical reactions in our body. So each time we feel something different, it's our subconscious most of the times not considering health situations, right? Most of the time is our subconscious mind telling us something. We're gonna, go, we're gonna dive deeper this in the next slides. So here is the four basic areas of emotional intelligence. Right? Some people call it different, but it all means the same. So we got the self-recognition, which ability to understand and perceive your own emotions. Then you got the social recognition, which is the ability to perceive in others what they're feeling, how they're feeling, what they're feeling, what they feel. And then you got the self-management and the social management. I like to use this example of a company when it comes to recognition and management, right? So imagine a company, right? That two companies, one that has a very good management and then another one has a very bad management, right? In most of the cases, the company that has a good management it's mainly because they are able to recognize what needs to be managed, right? So that's why you use these famous KPIs on the companies. So you can actually see what needs to be managed and then improve by the management itself. The same happens to us. In order to be able to manage ourselves and manage our social interactions, we need to be able first to recognize what needs to be managed in ourselves and others as well. Just once again, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate, right? We have an hour talking, so I'm doing my best to bring the topics and insights to you all in a way that we don't miss anything in this presentation. But also, I wanna I wanna keep the speed, you know, as, in a way that you, know, you guys can actually understand everything I'm sharing with you all.
So let's see. Um, so here I'm gonna bring some examples of my personal and professional experience from the emotional intelligence perspective, right? But before that, I'm just gonna show you how the process of thinking and emotions and the connection between the mind and the body happens. So it makes it easier to you guys understand. So let's start with the thinking, right? What affects our thinking? What affects the way you're thinking? What affects how we think? So it's basically our values and beliefs, our experience and our mindset. What I mean by values, the values. The values is basically what is important for us in any aspect of our lives. And then here is a very interesting point. Most of us know the values of the company that we work for, but we don't know our own, our own values. What happens if you don't know? Of, what happens if, you're not, uh, if you don't know how to recognize our values? We're not gonna be able to change what are you gonna change in our lives? So this, uh, this, this value parts, we could easily like make another talk, only talk about values, sharing some techniques, how to, to, to know, how to recognize your own values, and then how to see the reflection is, uh, the, the, the reflections of these values in your behaviors is extremely important. It's, this is so important. But it's, um, it connects, it, this, this connects our actions with our emotions and our thinking. Everything we do is based on our values. Experience. Experience is another interesting point as well. Experience comes to not only what we experience in life, but also how we experience it when it comes to the perception of uh, the perception of the experience as well. Mindset. Mindset is just, um, it's very related to what do you think is true? And then how is the structure of our thinking? which is uh, how we receive the external message and then how we project our in internal uh, patterns of thinking as well. So let me bring you guys uh, an example how I actually apply this understanding in my own life and how it uh, has been helping me to keep climbing the ladders here in Australia and getting closer and closer to my desired reality. I want to live in here. So just coming back for, for, for coming back to my personal experience I had in the company I was working for. When I started out, as I mentioned before, I had no experience in construction. I had no English. I didn't know how to even uh, use a hammer <laughs> to hit a nail. <laughs> I literally did nothing about construction. And to get a sponsorship, I was competing with other people who already have experience in the field. And most of them, 95% of them, they were all English native speakers. Um, speakers, sorry. So what I did, I had to come up with a strategy, right? So I, every single day when I was turning up to work, 
I was focused on trying to understand the people there. Because I didn't know the process. The process I would learn it by doing it, by being taught by the other people. So the process itself I was learning from the others. So what I focus on, I was focusing on learning about the people who are part of this process. And then slowly I start noticing some patterns of behavior in these people, right? Especially the owner of the company. So it's because it's a, it was a very small company. We, we all had a very close relationship with the owner, which was the builder as well. Along of the week, I began to notice some, some situation that keeps repeating every week, right? One example was um, every Friday, which was the, which was the payday, the payment day, right? What he used to do, he used to write a, he used to put all the receipts of the payment in a letter. And then the end of the day on Friday, he used to call everyone to give this letter. It was just a receipt with the payment, nothing else, right? But the interesting fact was the way the people were responding to the situation, right? Most of the people, they simply get the letter, not even saying thanks, <laughs> turn their backs and leave because they are used with the situation. But deep inside, they didn't understand what the owner was trying to tell the people, right? And because it was really, focusing like what's actually going on with the situation why is he doing that what's what's his needs what's his wants what he's expecting from us in exchange by his action right so i began to notice that like you know what he actually wants he wants to have people like not only good workers in the company he wants to have someone who is able to to being thankful for the whole his effort he was doing to keep this run, the, the companies running. He wants to have like a couple minutes to not talk about work, not like giving directions to everyone. He wants to have a couple minutes to connect with people. But the others didn't understand of that. So what I did, I was just like, there was, I, I just simply, just by understanding his values, having like understanding the, the experience I was living in a more deeper level and then having this mindset of how can I make it better for myself considering that I was the last in the, uh, in the line to get the sponsorship but I had the mindset to make the change I, uh, I wanted to change I slowly starting um, just giving what he was looking for in that moment, just by saying thanks, messaging him after that. Just like simple, simple, simple things. That's the, the beautiful thing that I believe about emotional intelligence by being able to understand uh, what actually people need in words, like what's the, why they behave, what's their emotions like. It's just like once you understand there's simple, simple things that you can do that can actually completely change the entire situation, right? So just like by having like the simple, the simple like um, being thankful, showing care, connecting in a more deeper level, asking things that is not a part of the process, it's not a part of the working that we are doing for, you start creating this like strength between us. And slowly, this unconscious racist behavior, racist behaviors that he had, started to change because the experience he was living, I was basically the only one who was able to fulfill his values he was looking for in that moment. 
right? So um, it's very, uh, it's something very simple, but very deep at the same time. Because if I didn't know that, if I wasn't able to understand what's his values, what's his experience, what's his mindset like, I wouldn't be able to to change my actions and change my behaviors eh? in a way that I could bring him to my side. I could strengthen this relationship and through this relationship, create this new reality I'm living at the moment. And an interesting fact is that this relationship, just like by building empathy and by being resilient, by bouncing back all the time something bad happened to me or because it was sometimes I used to see myself like in a very low position because because I was simply because I was I was uh, I didn't have the language didn't have the experience I was living in a situation that I was constantly the experience I was living I was constantly being challenged to be in touch with my own emotions and feelings and looking back inside to me, inside myself, and find a ways to change the situations. Firstly, within myself. So this relationship that is starting from with a, with a person who has this unconscious racist behavior, along of this journey during the six years of this company, because I was able to understand him because I was able to have this empathy with this person. Um, I could see things that people that were working for him for years, for at least a decade, were able to see. And paradoxically, along with this time, he had a problem, a very personal and professional problem that he he actually thought he thought about taking his own life right this is um this is something that is um something that i, I really like you know um i want to like make people understand like how important is it like with the ability to understand our own emotions yeah, because uh, this example I'm giving you guys, like of having someone who initially um, see you from a, um, from a very bad perspective to the point that he had a situation in his own life that he thought about taking his own life. And then through the, the knowledge, through the understanding, through the empathy that, I, uh, that we have created, as I, I was able to shift his perspective about the situation and, and himself, and then ended up saving his own life, right? And then this is this is a this is a thing that doesn't come from me. This is a thing that he shares with everyone in a very open way, right? So a couple of weeks ago, for example, we had a we had a meeting with all the workers in the company, talking about the results and things that was happening inside of the company, and then he had a time and then put this topic as a part of the meeting, right? So when he was talking about our relationship and how it actually has saved his own life, right? And created this massive ripple effect, right? And then this, uh, that's why I'm, um, I'm so interested about this topic because um, it was something that back in the days I wasn't, um, I wasn't able to understand it. Right, emotions for me, like it was, uh, it was something that, wow, like stay away, let's hide it, let's keep this under the carpet, right? And then now I'm like just being able to share this, like this, uh, just just a little few examples that uh, I've been living, that completely changed not only my life but also other people's life. Is uh, I'm feel very grateful for that, and then. Uh, um, it really, it really makes me believe that literally anything is possible. And the first step of anything that you want to change is just be aware of what is that. And um, and I guess that's why you're here today to to be able to understand, to becoming more aware of how this process of uh, 
emotion, emotion and experience and actions and thinking and the connections between the body, the body and the mind works, right? So, um, give you a couple of seconds for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, something you need to know about Valus experience thinking, um, please, again, feel free to ask at any time. I'm very happy and excited to share and to go deeper with you in this topic, right? But also want to respect the time because we still got the the design thinking topic to share with you guys. So if everything was clear, uh, great. If you still have any questions or if you still like processing all these informations, uh, please get my contact and then message me after the our conversations. I'm more than help, uh, more than happy to to help. Um, I put here a few techniques to become, uh, to make this, uh, everything I, I, I've been sharing with you guys more tangible, right? So you can actually apply in your, on a daily basis, some of these techniques. So the first one, anchoring. Anchoring, we actually already did. So anchoring, anchoring uh, basically is what you did in the, great, in the gratitude exercise. Anchoring, when you use it, when you use the process of visualization and then use your body, your body to connect your mind with a specific places in your body, what happens, you create an anchor that any time that you wanna bring back this state of mind, this, um, these emotions that you are feeling, or when you visualize something that you wanna see in your life, what do you do? You do this anchoring technique. What we did was just like place place our hands in our chests and then visualizing something that you are grateful for. So anytime you can guys can try right now, like just place your hand again in your chest. You're gonna remember what you what you thought to yourself of what you are grateful for. And then this can be used at any time. I use it all the time. So every morning I create these anchorings. So any, anything that happens during the day that puts me in a different state of mind, I was just like recall this anchoring um, state so I can remember what was the feeling I was feeling when I was visualizing something that is in, that makes me feel good. Um, this is all work in progress, right? So um, I'm also a student, right? So I just wanna make it, I wanna make it very clear so uh, we all are at the same journey, we are all learning. So then, yeah, so I'm, I'm just basically sharing something that actually works for me and then also has been working for other people as well. Another one is the self-talk. Self-talk is, um, I got a technique that I use for myself that I, uh, I've been telling to other people and it actually has been working for them as well. So I just wanna come back to this communi communication overview. Um, I think you guys have heard of it already, that actually how the communication works. Right? So basically it's 55% of the communication that you do is by body language, facial expressions, uh, facial expression, gesture, um, body language in general, right? This is, uh, this is speaks more than any, any words. 38% is the tonality that we use and 7% is verbal. So what's the connection with the self-talk? We all have like sometimes this, uh, this, this little voice in the back of our minds, which sometimes is positive, sometimes is negative, right? Telling us stuff that affects us, uh, that, uh, affects us directly our state our state of mind. When it's positive, it helps, uh, it helps us become more positive, but when it's negative, it does affect us negatively as well. So one technique I use to change the self-talk is uh, simply by changing my body language 
and change the tonality. This is the key. Changing the tonality of this uh, this uh, this little voice that is talking to us, right? What I mean by that? So we usually like this um, this little voice that you have in our back of our minds. It has a, a specific tone. It usually is the same tone. It's the same tonality, right? So what if you change the tonality of your of this the voice of in, in the back of our mind? We're going to change the way that you receive, the way that you understand the message that you're receiving from this, from, this, uh, from this voice, right? As an example, if God, like, you know, if you, um, it's, um, it's a very simple example, actually, you know. So if you want to change the tonality of this, uh, this little voice in the back of our mind, what if you just change the tonality for something more funny or something that reminds or a, a kind of tonality that reminds you something that makes you laugh. It's very simple. It might seem no sense right now. I'm just gonna shut here. Oh yeah. Um, I just saw the message from Sibeli here. She was asking us the example, right? Um, I hope this that's the example you were asking for because I just saw the. The message so this self-talk like this the uh, how to change the tonality of this voice that you have in the in the back of our mind sometimes it's just simply changing the tonality of it just putting a tonality that reminds you something that makes you laugh right so we have this message telling you oh you're doing something wrong you're doing something wrong don't try to stop this thought don't try to change the message don't try to change a thought by using another thought just simply change the tonality of this voice and tell me later the results. Physiology control, controls psychology. Usually when you, when you are like in this uh, negative state of mind, we tend to, to go deeper and deeper in our minds. But, what, but in reality, if you want to change it, what you can simply do is just change our physiology, right? I just want to bring you some more awareness about like how psychology and physiology work. So, for example, if you, if you start paying attention when you are like, you know, in a state of mind that you, wanna, you don't want to be, when you are like in a negative state, if you pay attention in your physiology, we usually like are in this closed position. We are like looking down, shoulders down, like something that our body, our body matches our psychology. But if you, if you want to change the psychology, you can simply change the physiology of our, body, of our bodies, opening up your chest, stretching out things that makes you open to receive. There is no specific position. We just got to open up, open up to receive, right? This is definitely will change the... This is definitely will help you how to um, your your psychology at the moment. Simple techniques like um, I'm a big fan of keep things simple as simple as possible. Also understand the method. Also understand the methodology. I always try to find a way to apply everything I've been learning in a more simplistic ways. So yeah, that's why I'm, I'm doing my best to really share some very simple examples with you guys. And report, report, report is the ability to to feel uh, to to make other people feel understood by you. How can we do that? If you came back to this communication or reveal, especially for people who who are not uh, English speaking a uh, speaker living overseas. This can be very, very helpful, right? If you have this awareness that, okay, we don't know the words sometimes. We don't know how to communicate with people because we don't know the words, but just like being aware that the word is only 7% of the communication itself, right? So many times you can build a lot of report with others just by matching their physiology. Simply matching their physiology creates a huge report. We all do that. 
we just are not being aware because many of, many of the things that, uh, that we do, as I mentioned before, we do subconsciously, right? But once you become conscious of something, you can actually replicate it, right? And then have more success in your interactions, right? So from the emotional uh, intelligence perspective, I guess uh, that's it. Um, uh, we could definitely like having more time, we could actually go much more deep in each of these steps, bringing more examples, and then even doing a few exercises with you guys, but we have to respect the time as well. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to message me after the, the webinar. I'm more than happy to, to help and connect with you guys. Designing thinking. So we, well, I actually end up using a bit more time than I was expecting for the emotional intelligence. So um, I just asking Walter, like uh, how much more time do we have and how far can I go? I'd like to finish, I'll try to speed up and just bring this emo design thinking perspective as well. Hi Adrian, uh, we can have uh, like another around 10 minutes. Okay. Before two, we're gonna use the link for another meeting. Okay. But, yeah, feel free to, to use another 10 minutes or otherwise you can schedule another webinar for design thinking, it's up to you. Okay, okay, so uh, we, we can use this last 10 minutes and then if you, if you cannot finish it, we can definitely schedule another webinar talking specifically about uh, design thinking or, or even doing another one about emotional intelligence if everyone is interested. Um, all right, so design thinking. You know, so design thinking is a technique I've been using to build this new reality I'm living right now in Australia. Right now, as a permanent resident, um, I got the. Um, I'm legally allowed to to work in another field to have my own business. So I found this methodology a very interesting uh, technique to combine what I lived in the past and to create this new future I want to create. So what is design designing thinking? The design thinking is a iterative process which seeks to understand the user, challenge assumptions, and redefine problems in attempting to identify alternative strategies and solutions that might not be instantly apparent with our initial level of understanding. Um, to summarize it, I just see like design thinking is a way to approach complex pro problems and see these problems from the user perspective from a more holistic, in a, in a more holistic way. So the, basically this, part, this process works like this. It's a non-linear process. So don't see this as uh, we go from step one to step two to step three to step four to step five. It's actually, we can start actually from five and then go back to three, go back to one. But basically um, that's the, the the main steps that we use to uh, to create the solution for this complex problem based on the user perspective right so basically we seek we seek firstly to understand what is the problem from the user experience and then you define what actually is the problem which many times change also to have a deeper understanding of the people and the problem itself and then we create ideas based on this definition and the understanding of the users and the problem. And then you go to the prototype stage, which is like a create, a, create the, is a test, test it out the first solutions that you wanna provide, provide before you go to, okay, test the solution that you're gonna provide and finalize with the tests, right? So, I bring you an example, guys. All right, you still got five minutes. The problem I was um, I was analyzing was this one. Artists, musicians, and creatives in general have lost their jobs during the pandemic, and then uh, and they are not able to have an income 
by applying by applying the usual ways. So we all know because of the social distance, we are not able to uh, to have any crowns outside, right? So that's why this industry, the entertainment and then the arts industry, has been so affected, right? So my goal is like combining my passions and then bringing solutions for this industry in a way that you can uh, see the situations from a different perspective. So what I did to understand more this problem, the method I used to empathize with the user and then understand the problem was uh, an interviews through a podcast I have created which is called the Creative Healer. And then also I've done a few empathy interviews. So here I put in some people that I have interviewed. Houghton, professional DJ, music producer, and so French creative director, owner of Le Petit Bateau, Andre Mayer, DJ, body piercer and yoga teacher, Daniela Vasconcelos, tattoo artist and entrepreneur, Eduardo B, visual artist. So all people who works in the industry, so I thought like, if I want to understand what's the problem, I need to understand, uh, I need to connect with people who works in the industry already. So here uh, I put a few, a few things that uh, I got from these interviews. I didn't mention the names because we don't need to, just to give and understand how I connect with these people and then how it helped me to understand the problem from their perspective, right? So here's a few things that they say a few things that they thought, and a few things that they felt. Collaboration is the key. Artists should connect with each other more than everyone. A lot of people. Mindset is the main problem in our industry. So yeah, there's a lot of, lot of things. There's a lot of uh, very interesting insights that uh, I got from just by being able to connect with these people in a more deeper level, yeah? Which comes back to the emotional intelligence skills as well. So by having this uh, a bit better understand about the users and the problem, uh, we define a new statement for the problem, which we believe it was uh, expand the perceptions of the creatives uh, of um, of the creatives and the in their existing skills and how it can be used in a different ways. So having these new definitions of the problems, we start having many ideas and insights, right? So uh, here is just a few ideas that we had. Well, we can build a music production class, or a platform on social media to connect in a, for, for connection expressions for creatives, create a painting class, affiliate mar marketing for creatives, a new art collective brand to give the artists more exposure, uh, GTD methodology implementation, mastermind events for creatives, agile methodology implementations on the creative process. So many of the, uh, just by being able to connect and understand better, it gave us like this uh, lots of different insights that was completely different than we had in the beginning of the process, right? So we picked the first prototype, which was building a music production class. What was the test? So the way I did the test, I became, uh, I helped build this new music production class, but also I became one of the students to check the effectiveness from the user's perspective. And what, what happened along of this journey? So we start these classes as a presential classes at his studio, and then we moved to online classes, and then we did a few adjustments, and then through these adjustments that we've done, new students from other states start to join the classes. And then a few students from overseas start joining the courses. So by, by creating this prototype, we started having the, uh, the first results in our designing thinking um, application. Uh, I'm just speeding up guys so we can actually finish the, the thought, but I'm happy to come back with this, uh, this topic at any time. And then here is just to summarize like uh, what's the intelligence and design thing applied, what's the benefits I got from it just by applying, by applying these techniques and methodology, right? So the music production class would cost over 
20,000 in another schools. And with 20% of that investments, in students can get the same level of knowledge and the courses customize to our needs and wants. I can tell you that easily because I, I, uh, I am one of the students, right? I check the price of the other schools. I'm already having this, the results I'm expecting, right? So this, uh, this approach, this by, by using this methodology, we, we, we slowly been, help, been helping other people as well to save money and then also having the knowledge they wanna have. Another benefit I have, I saved over 15,000 with fees expenses by offering the coaching skills for the company in exchange. So like 50% of my visa expense has been paid by coaching service in exchange, which helped me to save over 15,000. Right? Then by combining both methodologies, I'm actually creating a new career for myself, which is aligned with my passions and purpose in life. Um, well, exactly 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So just to, to finish up the, this, this talk, this, uh, this quick chat we had, guys, this is, a, this is a sentence that has been always present in my life that uh, really guide me through tough times, good times, all the time is like I keep this like really visible for myself all the times so I can internalize these words and really live by this belief I have, which is um, it's impossible until it's done. And yeah, guys, I hope um, I could uh, give something that you can actually apply in your lives. I hope I could bring some value. I could. Uh, I hope I could add value in your lives. And thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much to to decide to be here at this time. I'm very grateful for that, and happy to keep this connection with you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adriano. Thank you for accepting again our invitation, for sharing your experience, and sharing your story of life, your knowledge. Uh, so I will send the recording link to everyone that were visited to your talk because we actually has like a few now a higher number for for today. I don't know what happened if you everyone, but thank you very much. If you guys have any question, can just mail me or reply to the email that I will send later to you guys. Have a great week. You too. Thank, thank you very much, and see you guys soon. See you. Bye. Bye.